Insurance doesn't have to be a headache. Hodinkee Insurance is the fastest and easiest way to protect the watches you love. So, what are you waiting for? Sign up today. Instagram changed everything about watches. It changes the way we see watches, the way we collect watches, and what we like about watches. And a lot of times it's a kind of vintage inspired taste. And I think that flowed from a time when vintage watches were sort of the entry point to watch enthusiasm. Well, modern watch brands have seen that and started to create vintage inspired watches. And no watch is more an illustration of that idea than the Omega Seamaster 300. It's more a watch inspired by vintage inspired watches. What does that mean? Let's get into it. This is a week on the wrist with the new Omega Seamaster 300. Released in 2021, this watch represents Omega's full lean into the vintage inspired watch game. Now this is not the first time the brand has done this. We need only look at the Seamaster Railmaster, the first Omega in space, or even the preceding Omega 300 line to see just how we got here. But those watches never took the vintage ideal all the way over the goal line. The new 300 takes a page out of Tudor's playbook and opts to look full in the rear view in order to move forward. If you distill down this sort of homogenized taste that we all have developed and we all take part in and the sameness of watch design that we all tend to love, it's like Omega made an algorithm to find out what that is, captured it, programmed it, put it into a computer program and made this watch. Omega in recent years has developed a whole host of watches that harken back to watches of old, not just in spirit, but literal design, with markers that look old, colors that look old, watches that look old, even at the expense of functionality. And that's something that's really worth exploring. We've used the word faux tina or faux patina, and what that means is a unnatural aging of the markers so that they look like they've developed patina over time, which was a result back in the day of watches using luminescent material like tritium, which would naturally age if you kept them in dark environments, they would turn a darker, creamier color. So you look at a watch like the Seamaster 300 and you'll notice the markers and the numerals, all which are loomed and do glow in the dark, have been pre-aged. So you're getting a watch with all of the character that watches used to get through time. Now, what's most interesting about what Omega does with the Seamaster 300 range is that there's a Seamaster for everyone. Seamaster Aquaterra, a Seamaster Planet Ocean, even the Seamaster Diver 300M, but those three watches are all decidedly very modern. At the same time, Omega is introducing an almost parallel collection, the Seamaster 300, which can sit alongside a watch like the Diver 300M. As Hodinkee's resident movie guy, I have to make a movie reference here. The classic James Bond watch is very different from the Seamaster 300. And yet, with all of its purpose, capability, water resistance, movement technology, anti-magnetic properties, it just looks old. And it's meant to look old, but it's not a carbon copy of an older watch. It's actually a distillation of the ideal of what it means to be a vintage watch. So for one thing, if we wanna look at the more one-to-one -one ratio type stuff, it's the simple dial, right? It says Omega at the top, it has the Omega logo, and it says Seamaster 300 near six o'clock. These are signifiers of those vintage, those foundational Seamaster 300 models. Let's look at the individual parts on this watch that really make it that kind of vintage feel. The dial is blue, the bezel is blue, and all of the numerals are this sort of aged faux patina coloration, whereas the only thing that's white on the dial is the Omega logo and the Omega word mark. The cream faux vintage inspired luminescent material and super luminova that Omega uses on the dial. You'll see it in the hands, you'll see it on the end of the seconds hand, you'll see it in every single hour marker, and you'll even see it translated onto the bezel and in the bezel pip. But if you look at all the individual markers, especially the hour markers in the 12, three, six, and nine, there's depth because underneath is a sheet of luminescent material in this sort of aged color. And so what you get is this three-dimensional sandwich effect where one is on top of the other. And usually when loom ages, it does turn this kind of color, but you'll also notice on this dial that the Seamaster 300 word mark is also aged this creamy color. Now that would never be loomed. So off the bat, you're sort of tipped off to the fact that this is not meant to be functional. It's meant to be an aesthetic, a vibe. 
Adding to the sort of vintage styling is a large crown on the side of the case that has no crown guards. So unlike the more modern iterations of Omega Divers, if you were to bump it up against something, it would be unprotected. But again, that plays into the whole vintage ideal. This new Omega Seamaster 300 has an aluminum bezel, which is not an exact recreation of a historical model. The historical 300s had acrylic bezels, which were shiny and actually aesthetically more similar to the outgoing ceramic bezel model. With a new watch came sort of a step back in design and technology. You can scratch aluminum. It can fade over time. But maybe that's what a vintage watch buyer wants. It's a 41 millimeter watch. It wears a little larger than 41 millimeters. It has an interesting bracelet where it's polished on the outer links, brushed in the center links, which is actually uh, an update from the older model, which had the reverse. You turn the watch over and where I think this would be cemented as a true vintage inspired watch, it would have a closed case back. But of course, with Omega's movement technology, it is a fully open case back showing the Metas certified Omega movement which you can look at and really admire and, and admire the technology Omega puts into their pieces. But overall, that kind of is the secret between your wrist and the watch. You look at it and aesthetically it works. It has everything you want from a watch in today's taste standard. So at that standpoint, it's great. It's when you look and peel back all of these layers that the storytelling aspect behind the watch, the way that it represents today in a really interesting way, even though it looks to yesterday, makes it a very unique offering. All of these design cues, they're kind of a cheat code for the vintage charm that makes all those other watches so very Instagrammable. It's time to conduct a little experiment. I'm gonna take three watches out into the wild with me. This Omega Seamaster Diver 300M, a modern watch. This vintage 1960s Omega Seamaster 300 and the Omega Seamaster 300 we've talked about today. And the experiment is simple. I'm gonna take photos of each of them and I'm gonna see which one performs the best. My money is on the modern Seamaster 300. The first thing you notice is that the crystal's pretty reflective and the blue dial does bounce a lot of the sunlight off it, but really like, it looks kinda awesome, especially in front of the New York skyline. So, so far no complaints about this one. I've got to say, I'm getting a little nervous about my pick because the vintage Seamaster 300 is doing very, very well right now. It's the matte dial, it's light, it's aged, and the numerals are also very visible. So the legibility is no problem and you can pretty much take a picture of it in any light. The vintage watches have that charm I was talking about, but when I'm shooting the modern piece here, it's the modern design aspects that really stick out the most. There's a laser engraved dial here, which when the sun is coming up under the bridge and hitting it, it makes this watch look extra cool. I don't know, it's a little bit more interesting to shoot, but not quite as charming, I would say. Each watch offers a little bit of something. Which one is the best? Which photograph's the best? I mean, personally, I can't decide, so I'm gonna leave it up to you. And where else? On Instagram.